The phrases Pixar movie and Easter eggs go together like peanut butter and jelly. Fans always anticipate the studio's freshest release to be full to bursting with fun references and winks to pop culture. And director Leon Critch's journey into the land of the dead with Coco is by no means an exception. Here are just a few of the Easter eggs in Coco you may have missed. And it goes without saying, but spoilers ahead. What? Ugh. Famous food delivery. A Pixar movie must, the Pizza Planet delivery truck first appeared in 1995's Toy Story and has popped up in almost every single film the animation studio has rolled out since. The truck sits outside a trailer in a bug's life, drives across a bridge in Ratatouille, and it can be spotted in Coco right outside Miguel's house near the beginning of the movie. As a young boy stares wistfully outside, the Pizza Planet truck zooms past his window. The anticipated A113 like the Pizza Planet truck, the letter-number combination of A113 has deep roots in the Pixar film pantheon, though it extends its reach into plenty of non-Pixar animated films and television shows. The four-figure code is actually a reference to Room A113, the classroom that animation industry A-listers attended at California Institute of the Arts. And just like in every other Pixar movie, A113 shows up in Coco, specifically in The Land of the Dead, written backwards on the door of the Bureau of Family Grievances, where the deceased members of the Rivera family go to coordinate a way to send Miguel back where he belongs. Pixar Piñatas Sticking with the nods to Pixar projects past, Coco also features a tucked away reference to a few of its other movies, Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. As Miguel dashes through his village's markets towards the central plaza in the beginning of the movie, viewers will notice that he runs past a bundle of piñatas in the shape of cowboy Woody and astronaut Buzz from Toy Story, and the one-eyed green-skinned monster Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. Near the back of the piñata pack is a turquoise one, likely designed to look like Mike's partner, Sully. Familiar figurines After grabbing a bite to eat on his way to the plaza, Miguel happens upon a table lined with alabrijes, Mexican folk art sculptures that depict fantastical creatures painted in bright colors and bold patterns. Hidden amongst these striking sculptures are small figurines of the clownfish Marlin and Nemo and the regal blue tangfish Dory from Finding Nemo. Look carefully and you'll also see trinkets of the rat chef Remy from Ratatouille and the whale shark Destiny from Finding Dory. Never Forgotten Nemo there's yet another Nemo figure for viewers to find in Coco, this time in the Rivera family's Ofrenda. You'll spot the little guy during the scene in which Abuelita Elena places the photo of Mama Coco, Mama Imelda and Miguel's great-great-grandfather. He sits atop a jar on the right-hand side of the screen, just behind a mustachioed skeleton in a suit and top hat. The Luxo Ball Pixar's famous ball, officially called the Luxo Ball in reference to the studio's first ever animated short, Luxo Jr., is yet another staple of the studio's efforts. The yellow bouncy ball, adorned with a thick blue stripe and red star, appears in Coco during the rehearsal sequence featuring Frida Kahlo. Watch the background carefully as Dante the dog and Frida's monkey run after each other in the workshop. The ball can be seen on a table in a super quick moment. The Inspired Performer if wardrobe choices are any indication, it's possible that one of Pixar's oldest characters, Sid from the original Toy Story, may no longer be in the land of the living. During the talent show, one performer took the stage with a familiar-looking t-shirt. Sure, the hair's different and he's not making monsters out of toys, but only one guy in Pixar's history was dark enough to wear that shirt, despite how sad it is that Sid somehow ended up in the Mexican afterlife, being a skeleton DJ's got to be better than being a garbage man. A Legendary Voice John Ratzenberger, an actor best known for his long-running role on Cheers and his voiceover work, has become a Pixar legend. He's lent his pipes to a character in every one of the studio's films, including Ham the Piggy Bank in Toy Story, Mac the 18-Wheeler in Cars, and the Yeti in Monsters, Inc. Welcome to the Himalayas! As expected, Ratzenberger plays a part in Coco, but it's so brief that it likely breathed right by you. Ratzenberger voices a goofy skeleton whose dentist is the one who remembers him in the land of the living, thanks to his massive mouth of metal. Pixar's personal ofrenda Last, but in no way least, is a touching tribute to a few influential people who have sadly passed away. The Coco team included its very own a friend of sorts in the film's credits, with a series of photographs honoring those who have had an impact on Pixar as a whole. Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple, who was also a CEO and shareholder of Pixar, Don Rickles, famed insult comic and the voice of Mr. Potato Head in the Toy Story movies, and Joe Ramft, the voice actor behind Heimlich in A Bug's Life and Jacques in Finding Nemo. Director Lee Uncritch confirmed Jobs and Rickles' inclusion to Metro in an interview. 
At the very end of the movie, we kind of do a digital ofrenda, where we gave everyone in the company the opportunity to submit a photograph of someone in their life who was no longer with them but had been supportive of them. And we just filled the screen with hundreds and hundreds of these beautiful images. We included people in that group that we had lost from the Pixar family, people like Steve Jobs and Don Rickles. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.